Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. More specifically, a brand new Albums I Missed video. Today we are going to talk about a slew of albums that came out in the month of November 2022 that unfortunately were not subject to a full-blown album review for a, a, a multitude of, of possible reasons. November overall was probably the slowest month of the year. There were really only a, a solid handful of records that really grabbed my attention, and those were the ones that we talked about on this channel, on top of the, you know, larger releases from the larger bands like Disturbed and, and Devin Townsend and such. But there were still some cool ones we didn't talk about, and we're going to talk about some of those today. So, yeah. All right, here we go. First up, we have Till Clover's Takt. I am definitely not pronouncing that correctly, but it is the latest studio album from Norwegian pagan metal crew Kempfar. These guys have been kicking around for just about 30 years now, and in that time they have become one of the most consistent, one of the most uh, powerful forces within the realms of, of pagan metal. Uh, black metal in this album proves exactly why that is the case. Uh, furious, unhinged black metal assaults with a lot of uh, beautiful melodic passages, um, amazing production, amazing performances. It's urgent, it wastes absolutely no time, it's got a few twists and turns to keep the veterans on their toes. It's, it's a really great album. I don't really have a ton to say about it because it's pretty much Camp Far just kind of doing what they do, but doing so with the utmost professionalism and, uh, taste and and goodness and and such i would argue they are to pagan metal what a band like cannibal corpse are to death metal they're just so fucking consistent and they just fucking kick ass if you like camp far if you like pagan metal you're very likely to enjoy this album plain and simple next up we have dividing lines from threshold long-running progressive metal underdogs um it's it's fine it's it's totally a uh, totally 100% fine, serviceable, standard prog metal. I don't know, I, I guess I just mostly found this kind of boring. Like, it's a lot of the same melodies, a lot of the same guitar licks and solos, a lot of the same keyboards, a lot of the same orchestral bits that you've heard from a ton of other prog metal records, from a ton of other uh, Threshold records for that matter. These guys clearly love what they're doing, they're putting a lot of effort into it, but what they're doing just isn't especially interesting, you know? It's the most basic bitch prog metal ever, you know? It's it's dream theater light. I mean, sure, maybe that Camp Far album from before wasn't especially ambitious, but it was exciting and it threw a lot at you, you know? Viking chants and like old school black metal riffs and spices. Dividing Lines has nothing. It's prog metal written by somebody who just discovered what prog metal is and it's... It does absolutely nothing to uh, interest me or captivate me or to grab my attention. Um, I guess if you like Threshold and, and uh, other bands of this style, this would probably do it for you. More power to you, I guess. But um, yeah, not my cup of tea. What are you laughing at? You're silly. You're silly. Yes. She called me silly. Can you believe this bitch? Yes, silly! You're proving my point. No! Yes! No! Yes! That was Anna being a real silly billy. Can you can you believe this fucking silly bitch? Anyways, uh, next up we have seven words from uh, Eccentrics. Zentrics? I don't know how to pronounce their fucking name. They're an English thrash metal band. Uh, this album's better than I expected. Um, you know, not exactly breaking new grounds for the realms of thrash metal, but you know what? It's, it's tight. It's got energy. It's got enthusiasm. It's, it's well produced. There's a, a decent amount of variety in the hooks and riffs without being like too weird or too left field, you know? It's classic thrash metal done 
pretty well. I've, I've never paid a ton of attention to these guys, because I always thought they were at best kind of a, a C-plus tier thrash band, but this album surprised me. It's actually kind of decent. It probably wouldn't change your mind if you really disliked thrash metal, especially the modern state of thrash metal, but, you know, if, if you're just looking to fucking rock out and you got some beer and you want to eat some pizza with some friends, you know, this album will do the trick. If you just want to bang your head and mosh around and, and chug back something very unhealthy for your liver, this will do it. Have fun. I'm happy for you. Hell, I might be right there with you, at least for a little bit. Next up, we have Ashes Lie Still from Ingested, another album that honestly I don't have a lot to say about. It's modern, brutal death metal uh, with a lot of compression, and the sound is like very chunky and clear. Uh, not really my cup of tea. I mean, it's definitely heavy, and it's, it's definitely going to fucking pound your skull in if that's all you want. But I don't know. I, I like my death metal, my modern death metal especially, to have brawn and brains. You know, like that's why I like Venom Prison and Artificial Brain. And I mean, if I really just want some gnarly death metal, I'd rather have something a little bit more varied as far as the songwriting is concerned, and a little bit more raw in the vein of Undeath or uh, Ripped to Shreds or something like that. I don't know. It's fine, I guess, for at least one listen. Uh, I, I found myself being a little bored near the end of it, but I mean, for the most part, I would say it's a, a perfectly acceptable piece of just like modern death metal brutality you know it's not gonna blow any minds or or break any hearts it's it's an album it exists have fun next up we have the third eye from chaosium and uh wow holy shit cringe i hate it these guys literally woke up and said all right what if we took corn's most mid material and we somehow made it even more fucking mid. And we also made it way dumber. And we took the lyrics to like super cringe territory in the vein of like Psycho Sinner or Psychosexual or some other Jeremy Spencer project. Maybe this would have blown my mind when I was like fucking 12 and literally didn't know anything about any genre of rock whatsoever. Maybe this would have blown my mind if I, I lived in a universe where Korn had not existed but corn do exist and uh yeah sound fucking sucks i guess it's better than that last corn record i guess that that's kind of an accomplishment in a weird way but uh still not good probably one of the worst albums of the year if we're being honest just just really bad you know if if tala is proof that the new metal revival is real uh, Chaosium is proof that it shouldn't be. <laughs> That's a, you know, they're, they're the yang to Tala's yin right now. Like, this is, this is bad, man. This is fucking terrible. Next up, we have The Majesty of Decay from Judicator. That's right, the metal meltdown is talking about power metal for a moment. My god, we never talk about that. Why is that? Because Robert does not like power metal. Robert is not a fan of the overflowing buckets of nacho cheese that is power metal. But he'll make an exception for when a power metal album is good, for when a band releases an album that is actually listenable. And uh, Judicator have become known lately for making listenable power metal. 2020's Let There Be Nothing was actually a really good album. And The Majesty of Decay is also a really good album. It's over the top and and a little silly and a little cheesy, sure, in some aspects, but you know, it's I think tonally quite epic. I think there are a lot of great melodies, a lot of great riffs. I think the album is actually quite clever with a lot of uh, cool twists and turns here and there. You have a lot of variety on the record, a lot of like doomy and symphonic and prog metal elements. You have some black metal riffing to be found on a couple songs here and there. You have the High Priestess, which is just absurdly bizarre for all the right reasons, in my opinion, at least. I think the concept of the record is pretty interesting, dealing with like fear, loss, regret, redemption, faith, doing all of that without hitting you over the head with a bunch of pretentious fantasy mumbo jumbo. So yeah, uh, long story short, uh, someone released a power metal album that I actually liked. Good job, Judicator. I don't think you realize how fucking difficult that is to do at this point. 
It's really good. Check it out. If I'm telling you to check out a fucking power metal album, it has to be good. So just, just do it. End of story. Next up, we have A Mother's Curse from Stitch, Strichnos, Strichnos. Strychnos, I don't know. A lot of names that I, I'm not sure how to pronounce in today's Albums I Missed video. Here's what I do know. Apparently this band has been kicking around since 1998, but has not released an album until this point. A couple EPs and demos and singles and stuff like that over the years, but never a full-blown studio album. Why on earth did it take so long for there to be a full-blown studio album? I've honestly, genuinely no earthly idea, but it doesn't really matter now. We have the debut album. And it's gnarly as shit. Just like really badass, ghoulish, bloodthirsty, like blackened death metal with a bit of a death and roll kind of vibe, which is kind of interesting. Like some groovy licks here and there, some really fun guitar licks and melodies, uh, combined with the usual brutality of like blackened death metal, of extreme metal and such. This album is apparently heavily inspired by Hans Christian Andersen's The Tale of a Mother, specifically the ending, writing, and Def walked with her child into an unknown land. There's no bloat, there's no filler, there's no fat whatsoever. I love the guitar tone, I love how raw and, and nasty everything feels. I also like at the same time, everything is like really dynamic and punchy and clear. Like you can actually hear everything. Everything has legitimate weight. Just a really well-made album. Again, I really don't know why it took so long for these guys to make a debut, but I'm, I'm happy they did because this is honestly a, a really great fucking record. One of the better underground releases of uh, November 2022, I would say. Next up, we have Magisterial Romance from Constellatia. Uh, very emotive, very brutal, uh, very passionate kind of black gaze, melodic black metal, progressive black metal, you know, all the, the weirder subsections of the genre uh, mixed with like some really heartfelt songwriting and like this really great raw, atmospheric, immersive production. The tracks themselves are arguably a bit long-winded, with the shortest thing being 8 minutes and 47 seconds long, but the album overall wraps up in about 38 minutes, and everything within those 38 minutes is just really great. A lot of anguish screams and, like, agonizing clean vocals contrasted with, like, some kind of, like, post-rock, post-metal-ish uh, chords and, and harmonies and soundscapes and, like, Black Gaze, and like some more progressive twists and turns here and there. Very well done album in my opinion, highly recommended. Uh, another standout in underground metal for November 2022, alongside uh, the aforementioned uh, Stry Strychnos record. Next up we have Promethean Pathology, the debut album from Like a Tonon. I don't know much about this band, I've been told that it features members of Wayfarer and Blood Incantation. I don't, I, I can't really confirm that though, because I can't find any information about the actual fucking lineup. Here's what I do know. This album is weird. It's like technical, avant-garde death metal with like electronic and industrial elements. It's really dark, a lot of like really heavy crushing percussion. Disorientarian. How do you fucking say that word? Why is that twisting? Disorienting? Is that the word I'm looking for? I'm getting my tongue twisted all up in fucking knots today. Disorienting arrangements and and uh, and and such angular riffs, weird guitar tones, and like these really monstrous guttural vocals. It's just kind of in your face and bizarre in a way reminiscent to like uh, artificial brain ad nauseum. I would say that this was more of an interesting album than it was an entertaining one. I mean, this is not something I'm playing at the next family barbecue. That much is for fucking certain. I did enjoy diving into it. I, I look forward to continuing to dive into it, quite frankly, and peeling back every single layer and, and figuring out what makes this thing tick. Definitely not something for a more casual rock or metal listener to enjoy. This is definitely something that will require multiple dedicated listens, uh, and, and even then, it, it just feels maybe a little too weird for its own good, but I mean, fuck it. I, I think it's just really interesting in general, so that's why it's here. That's why we're talking about it. Next up, we have Deaf Western from Spirit World. This is the band's sophomore studio album. 
They're playing like crushing hardcore mixed with modern death metal. A lot of aggressive, muscular, riffy beatdowns as a result. A lot of uh, uh, beefy, meaty displays in your face. Aggressive, abrasive vocals. It's heavy. It's brutal. It's nasty. Everything you could possibly want from a band that fuses like hardcore and death metal together. Uh, and now there's also a Western motif, which is definitely a little weird. I don't fully understand it. I don't think it really fits the sound, but it is kind of cool. It adds a unique layer to a spirit world that definitely was not present beforehand. I think it does add to the epic nature of, of some of the lyricism and the storytelling on this thing, duh. Uh, I like that there are like actual Western musical elements in here as well, like stuff that you would find in like the score from a Western film, like whistling and rustic acoustic guitars. Like in the opening track, Mojave Bloodlust, you can picture, you can practically picture somebody like riding across the desert being uh, chased out of town by a group of fucking outlaws, or maybe they're running from the law or some shit like that. It's kind of like if Wayfarer got really into like 90s hardcore and death metal, you know what I mean? Like if they were doing that instead of like melodic black metal. Yeah, not the most seamless or even successful fusion here. You know, the Western the Western aesthetic and, and hardcore and death metal are not things I ever pictured being together, and I still don't really picture them together, but hey, props to Spirit World for trying something new. Who knows? Uh, maybe in the future, fucking Western-themed hardcore death metal will be all the fucking rage. Who knows? Maybe, maybe Spirit World are fucking pioneers in that regard. We, we'll see. Next up, we have The Inevitable Fork, Volume 1, from Melted Bodies. Uh, this is weird. This is just straight up fucking weird. I'm just gonna open with that right off the goddamn bat. Holy shit, this is weird. I first came to know this band when they dropped Enjoy Yourself back in 2020, which was also just super fucking weird. Uh, this, this EP is very much, uh, more of the same in that regard, duh. From what I understand, this is the first part in a three-part series, which will end with a full-blown studio album releasing next year. Pretty ambitious, pretty wild. I don't know how the fuck this whole thing is gonna turn out. I know it'll be weird, but I, I don't really know what the entire, uh, project, when it's all done and put together, is, is gonna be, but... I know it's gonna be weird. I know I keep saying that, but there's no other word to describe this. It's like if every Mike Patton project was thrown into a blender, you know? Like, there's a little bit of Mr. Bungle, a little bit of Faith No More, there's synthesizers and, like, sludgy displays and all these weird vocal spats, it's unpredictable, it's wild. I don't know what the fuck is going on most of the time, but I... I kinda love it. It's just absolutely insane, unorthodox nonsense in the best way possible. Very excited to see what the next EPs have in store. Very excited to see what the uh, the album next year will have in store. I mean, at this point, Melted Bodies is gonna be the band to look out for in 2023, I guess, because, uh, holy shit. So fucking weird. Holy shit. Next up, we have Eclipse of the Dual Moons from High Command, and this one's another funky one. Uh, not, not Melted Bodies level funky, but definitely a little funky. Kind of a smorgasbord of, like, retro heavy metal styles and spices, you know. A little bit of speed metal, nawabum, like Celtic Frost style guitars and, and concepts. With a singer who sounds like a rabid animal. Like, this motherfucker's about to go off old school Paul Bailoff style. Like, this motherfucker should sing for Exodus if something ever happens to Steve Souza. Despite all of this funkiness, the album is incredibly focused. It gets straight to the fucking point. A lot of great riffs, a lot of great lyrics, a lot of great hooks and melodies. It's another album that keeps you on your toes and keeps you uh, guessing as it goes along, throwing in some spoken word elements, throwing in Hammond organs, some more kind of proto-black metal, first wave black metal spices, some more thrashy energies and tendencies. Just a really great album, honestly. One of the better kind of retro heavy metal records I've heard this year alongside uh, Dream Killer from Summerlands. Check it out. It's fun. It's cool. It's good. Next up, we have Army of Frogs from Froglord, the internet's favorite 
frog-themed doom stoner metal band. Not exactly breaking new ground with this one, Frog Lord just kind of doing what they usually do on this, but I'm not concerned and neither should you be because it's, it's still really good. It's dank, it's spacey, it's trippy, it's stoner metal with a big time emphasis on the stoner, so much so that I can't picture someone sober having like an amazing time with this. I mean, you'll enjoy it because it's well made, but this was made to get absolutely fucked with. This was made to get fucked alongside. Like, so just do it. I do so while looking at some weird videos of frogs or whatever, because I guess that's the theme. Frogs. Frog Lord! Army of Frogs. I hope you like frogs, because if you don't, you might you might not like this band. That's, that's the only real issue I can think of, really, if it even is an issue. Frogs are pretty great. Anna, what's your favorite type of frog? Um, those, like, little, uh, green African tree frogs. Little, little green African tree frogs. That's a, what's so great about them? Or those little fucking round fat ones that look like little meatballs. They got a little booty. They got a little booty meatball frog. Yeah, they're so cute. Can't remember what their name is. But they're very you can't round. remember. Yeah. They're very fucking round and they're very silly. I fucking love them. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thank you. High five. Good job. Thank you for your contributions to today's video. You're and finally, let's wrap this up with a couple of EPs made by some fellow YouTubers. Specifically, metal YouTubers. Specifically, friends of the Metal Meltdown. For instance, Pair of Jeans Reviews is in a band called Bestial Tongues. Uh, and they just released an EP called Let Me In. And it is gnarly, chaotic, super dark, super evil, fucking pig destroyer worship. Like, it's just this chaotic, dark, violent grind, and I love it, and it's great, and it hits hard, and I'm not just saying that because Pair of Jeans is a cool dude, I'm saying that because this is good. This is really good shit. If you love grind, you're gonna love this. Period. End of story. Also, our friends from Forge Master Metal Reviews released an EP under the name Forge Masters. That EP is entitled A Future Without Organic Life Forms, and it's really good. It's, it's like this really punishing, crushing death metal with a lot of tasty guitar licks. It's got a little bit of, a, of an industrial underbelly, I would say. Uh, somewhat not so coincidentally, the album is also heavily inspired by The Terminator. It's over the top, it's brutal, it's violent, it's Terminator death metal. What more do you need to know? It's really cool. Check it out. And, um, yeah... That's pretty much it. I don't have much more to talk about. There's nothing else I really want to talk about. I've got shit to do. I'm fucking tired too. Like I've been I've been so busy lately. You don't you don't even want to know how busy I've been lately. It's fucking nuts. Thank you for watching. Those are all the albums that I feel I missed in the month of November 2022. I'm sure there are others, but these are the only ones that I really cared to pay attention to. Uh, stay tuned because very soon the Metal Meltdown will be starting the, the typical end of the year content and such. In fact, you may see my top 10 best metal albums of the year video very, very soon, perhaps within the next week. Anna and Chompy's top 10 albums as well, wow. which she has to finally work on. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of just saying that she's working on it. Shut up. <laughs> I mean, I gotta edit it. I know. I want it. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Okay. Let me know what other albums you feel I missed in November 2022. If there are any, I don't, I really don't feel like there are, but fuck it, surprise me. Maybe there's something just truly mind blowing that I'm just completely forgetting about. Uh, press this button to subscribe. Boom. Look, more videos. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.